this, uh, I realize maybe is not interesting to some of you, but uh, you need to know why we're losing our magnetic field. And uh, there's nothing we can do about it except supplement. And that's what we want to talk today about how magnetism actually affects the tissue of your body. To understand that, you need to learn a little bit about some atomic physics here. So we're going to start out with a simple atom here with electrons spinning around the nucleus and protons in closer spinning around the nucleus. Now, when you increase the magnetic field of that atom, there's some things begin to happen. First of all, the electrons that are going with the magnetic field start going in a lazy eight. And the reason for that is because each little electron has its own magnetic field. And so it wants to go perpendicular to the field. And this is like having a car with a uh, tire out around. It makes the atom begin to wobble more. And we call that precession. There's other things that happen too that are even more important. The amount of increase in magnetic field will determine the amount of increase in velocity on some of the electrons. Now, those that are going in a direction that is complementary to the valence electron, in other words, if you had a negative field underneath the electron and its valence electron was going in a counterclockwise direction, it would be speeded up. If it was positive underneath it, then it would be slowed down. So you can either speed up or slow down electrons on the atom, depending on the direction of magnetic field. Now, if this atom is in solution or in the air, of course, the atom will orient, orientate itself to the magnetic field and there is uh, always a speed up. But if it's already in the tissue, such as it is, is in your body, well, then it can't just flip over because it's already in a molecular structure. And so you can speed up or slow down the valence electrons. Now, why do we keep talking about valence electrons? They're the active ones that, that bind the atoms together to make molecules and to make enzymes and to make tissue. So it's very important that we have them in an energy state that we can uh, have them sharing to bind atoms together. There's other things that happen also uh, when you speed, when you have paired electrons, valence electrons, one will speed up and the other one will slow down. This will also cause an imbalance in the polarity of the atom and will make the atom vibrate at a higher intensity. And all of this increased vibration or increased uh, intensity of molecular action will then will enhance chemical reactions. And here you can see it now in the uh, little animations we have here of how this actually works. Now, you can remember back when you were in chemistry lab and in high school, how you heated uh, two uh, solutions to make a chemical reaction happen. You put the reagents together and you heated them and, and you increased the molecular action. And there you were doing putting the energy in with actually heat waves and uh, heat energy. In this case, we're using magnetic energy to increase the molecular action and enhance the chemical reactions. Now, when I came upon, upon this concept, I thought, boy, this would be great in, in the chemical industry. So I went to the patent office in Washington, D.C., and to my amazement, there had already been about seven patents using this same technology to enhance chemical reactions where the chemicals were too volatile to use heat. So uh, this is already an accepted principle uh, in the chemical industry. Now we know that how this happened. Remember, as I said, the right direction. Well, what is the right direction? Well, let me give you some uh, experiments that we ran uh, to determine what the right direction was. First, we took a long cage. It was about uh, 20 inches long, and we put six mice in there. And uh, we, under one end of the cage, we put a large magnet that covered the whole end of the cage and it was negative, and the mice went and nested on that, over that magnet. Now, this is underneath the cage. They weren't touching the magnet. It was down underneath the cage. The cage was plastic. Now, we turned the magnet over so it was giving them a positive field, and they promptly got up and moved to the other end of the cage and uh, put their feces on top of the positive field. 
Now, we did this 20-some times uh, with the mice moving back and forth. Every time we put positive field underneath them, they moved away and went over to the negative side of the cage. Finally, they got smart and started nesting in the middle so they wouldn't have to move back and forth. Uh, it took them a while to learn. The second experiment uh, that we did on this, we made a room that had an electromagnetic field that was coming up from the floor, was very even, less than one Gauss difference between one side of the field and the other. Now, we talk about Gauss now. A Gauss is a measurement of magnetic field. And so uh, that's a common term here. And uh, there's also Tesla, but uh, most people use Gauss. Now, in this particular case, we increased the Earth magnetic field by 10 times. We put a bed in this room, put two people on the bed, and as they were laying there, I, I went in about a half hour after they laid in this nice, uh, even magnetic field, and they said, brother, this feels just wonderful. And I said, well, let's double the amount of strength of the magnetic field and see what will happen. Now, I didn't double the strength of the magnetic field. I reversed it, so it was going opposite to the Earth's magnetic field. That means it was negative above and positive underneath them. As we waited to see what would happen, in about uh, 25 minutes, the, the two people that were on the bed called me in and said, look it, you've got to turn this thing down. It's, it's killing us. And so I went in and I said, can you get out of bed? And they said, well, we can hardly, we ache from head to toe. And they could barely get out of bed. And I said, well, let's turn it down and see where it was and see if you feel better again. So I reversed the field so it was going complementary to the earth. In 30 minutes, they felt great again. They never knew what had happened to them, but I knew how important the direction of field was becoming. Now, later on, when we made the very powerful magnetic fields, such as we have in the magnetic molecular energizer, which is a 10,000 pound machine that focuses a very powerful field through the, mag through the body, we learned very early on that we had to ask the people, how do you normally sleep? And make sure that the magnetic field went through their body complementary to the Earth's magnetic field when they normally go to sleep at night. Otherwise, they were in pain within a few minutes. So these are all reasons why we say it's very important to have the Earth's magnetic field your guide. In other words, we want to be complementary to that, having the magnetic field go through the body the same direction the Earth's magnetic field did when the cells divided originally. So now, if this Earth's magnetic field is so important, we need to also look at any other sources of magnetic field we can get. And Dr. Becker spent his lifetime studying the electromagnetic fields of the body. And so we know now that there is a big source of magnetic field in the body, and that is the chi system or the vitality system of the body. We can also supplement the Earth's magnetic field with magnets and magnetic beds, but we won't talk about them now. We want to talk about the chi or the vitality system because it's very important in this whole uh, magnetic uh, requirement of the body. What we have to understand is where, how this electromagnetic field flows and what is consisted of in the body. Dr. Becker found that the astrocyte cells in the brain can convert uh, chemical energy to electrical energy. Now this energy flows out over the outside of the nerves, not down the axons in the middle, but on the swan cells on the outside of the nerve. He discovered that these swan cells were semiconducting, which allowed this electricity to flow very easily and uh, with a lot, without much resistance. So it didn't take a lot of energy in the brain to get quite a, a significant electromagnetic field to the periphery of the body. At first he thought that the energy flowed out on the motor nerves and came back on the sensory nerve. But after a while, he r realized that that wasn't the case. It flowed out on both the motor and sensory nerves. Guess how it came back? It came back on the fascia of the body. He said, could this be what the Chinese have been talking about for centuries? the meridians in the body and the chakras. And so he got a grant from NIH to study this. 